Meet Perry Mason, a classic TV series that debuted in 1957. Have you ever wondered when you first got hooked on this timeless show? Whether it was decades ago or just yesterday, there's something about the adventures that keeps fans coming back for more. What makes this series a lasting symbol of the industry? Is it the gripping courtroom drama or the brilliant mind of our titular character? Whatever it is, Perry Mason has secured its place in television history. As you dive into the episodes, be prepared for a roller coaster of emotions. There are funny moments that'll make you chuckle, shocking twists that leave you on the edge of your seat, and poignant scenes that might just tug at your heartstrings. The journey is filled with surprises, so keep watching. Now, we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience with Perry Mason? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We can't wait to read them. Stay tuned for more fascinating facts and untold stories about the series. There's always more to discover in the world of Perry Mason. Happy watching. Perry Mason, a TV series that premiered in 1957, is a notable example of the legal drama genre. Like many shows of its time, it reached its peak in the earlier seasons before facing a decline, especially in the final season. The series follow what is somewhat predictable structure, including recurring elements like Paul Drake's familiar greeting to Della Street. Raymond Burr, previously known for his antagonist role in Hitchcock's Rear Window, underwent a significant transformation to portray Perry Mason. Initially heavyset, Burr slimmed down for the role. However, as the seasons progressed, his weight increased again. After Perry Mason, he starred in Ironside, facing criticism about his weight and becoming a target for jokes. William Hopper, the son of a well-known red baiting columnist, may not have been a standout actor, but he found success in his portrayal of Paul Drake, marking the peak of his career. William Talman faced a suspension from CBS censors during the series only to be reinstated due to public pressure and support from producer Gail Patrick. The melodramatic acting, common in the 1950s when the series began, felt outdated by its conclusion. Like many long-lasting shows, Perry Mason succumbed to poor scripts that ultimately led to its conclusion. On a different note, some viewers hold Perry Mason as a cherished gem. Described as the godfather of legal dramas, the series provides a nostalgic glimpse into 1950s and early 1960s Los Angeles. The cinematography and performances are commendable, creating a positive atmosphere, even in the midst of criminal case resolutions. The show's intelligence and humor seamlessly blend into the courtroom proceedings, adding a fresh and light feel to a theme centered around solving criminal cases. Despite its seven-decade age, the overall appeal of the show remains strong, making it a highly recommended classic. Perry Mason, the popular legal drama from 1957, unfolds with interesting details that add depth to its story. Raymond Burr, a Navy veteran from World War II, drew inspiration from his own Pacific experiences, shaping not only Perry Mason's character, but also his later role as Robert Ironside. The connection between Burr's real-life service and the on-screen personas adds authenticity to the characters. In terms of episode titles, Perry Mason follows a consistent pattern. Among the 271 episodes, only three deviate from the standard, the case of the formula, these exceptions are the case of Paul Drake's Dilemma, the case of Constant Doyle, and the case of A Place Called Midnight, omitting the second article for a subtle distinction in naming. Perry's legal skills unfold within the walls of the Brent Building in downtown Los Angeles, California. His office, a central hub for solving mysteries and delivering justice, becomes an integral backdrop to the unfolding legal drama. This location solidifies the series' connection to the lively atmosphere of 1950s Los Angeles. As the series progressed, Perry Mason captivated audiences with its predictable yet compelling structure. The weight fluctuations of Raymond Burr, who transformed his physique for the role, became a notable aspect of the show's evolution. Meanwhile, William Hopper's portrayal of Paul Drake marked a career peak, adding a distinctive flavor to the ensemble cast. Despite facing challenges in later seasons and succumbing to script issues, Perry Mason remains a beloved gem for viewers. Termed as the godfather of legal dramas, it provides a nostalgic glimpse into the bygone era of 1950s and early 1960s Los Angeles. The series' lasting appeal lies in its commendable cinematography, intelligent courtroom proceedings, and a blend of humor that lightens the mood even in the midst of criminal case resolutions.
To sum up, Perry Mason's rich story weaves together Raymond Burr's personal experiences, the unique episode title pattern, and the iconic Brent building setting, creating a lasting impact in television history. Perry Mason, which started in 1957, had a practical approach in its courtroom scenes. Instead of having trials, important moments happen during preliminary hearings, avoiding the need for a jury and saving money. This choice made the legal proceedings seem more realistic, different from the usual courtroom dramas. Lieutenant Arthur Tradge, a character who appeared regularly, called Perry Perry many times, but Perry never used Tradge's first name. This detail in their interactions added a sense of formality and hierarchy to their professional relationship. There was a significant incident that affected the cast when William Talman, who played a key character, got fired after a party he attended was raided by Hollywood police officers. Despite denying any wrongdoing, he got dismissed due to the morals clause in his contract. Even though there were attempts to get him back on the show, the damage to Talman's acting career was permanent, and he struggled to find consistent work afterward. By dealing with the complexities of character relationships and unexpected real-life events, Perry Mason stood out as a TV series that combined legal drama with challenges behind the scenes. This mix contributed to its lasting impact in television history. Raymond Burr's portrayal of Perry Mason in the 1957 TV series made a lasting impression on viewers as seen in a funny encounter during the show's original run. A woman once approached Burr in public, questioning why he never seemed to lose a case. His deadpan response revealed the selective nature of the cases presented on Saturdays. When initially chosen for the role, Burr faced a physical transformation. Being 60 pounds overweight, he went on a crash diet, losing a considerable amount to fit the part. This dedication not only secured his role, but also showcased his commitment to bringing Mason to life. In a noteworthy aspect of the 1957 season, auto sponsorships alternated between GM and Ford every other episode. Mason navigated the streets in a Ford Skyliner, only to switch to a black Cadillac convertible in the next installment. Similarly, Paul Drake's car shifted between a Corvette and Thunderbird, while Tredge cruised in a 57 Buick sedan, later replaced by a Mercury. The series' practical approach to courtroom scenes contributed to its unique flavor. Opting for preliminary hearings over trials added a realistic touch, avoiding the need for a jury and saving production costs. Lieutenant Arthur Tragic's formal address of Perry, without using his first name, underscored the professional hierarchy in their relationship. A significant real-life incident affected the cast when William Talman, a key figure in the series, faced dismissal after a police raid on a party he attended. Despite denying wrongdoing, the morals clause in his contract led to his firing. Efforts to reinstate him proved futile, marking a permanent dent in Talman's career. In navigating character relationships and real-life challenges, the TV series stood out as a show that seamlessly blended legal drama with behind-the-scenes complexities, ultimately contributing to its lasting presence in television history.